So I was thinking a little bit about quantum mechanics and just there's some things about it, the topic that frustrate me a little bit, um, obviously that I don't understand it and nobody does, but that I understand it even less because I can't dedicate my life to studying physics, unfortunately. I would love to, but uh, only one life, got a lot of stuff to do. But there, there are some things that even with my limited understanding kind of frustrating, kind of frustrate me right now. I think a lot of people interpret it very incorrectly, which um, it kind of goes like Schrodinger's cat, right? There's, there's a cat in the box. Is it dead? Is it alive? That is a, a thought experiment. It's an analogy. It is not meant to, you're not meant to literally say that if I put a cat in a box, it literally is not alive or dead until I check. That's not how to interpret that. It is a metaphor for the way that, that photons, light, uh, and electrons behave when you examine them, which is is pretty mysterious and strange, the, the way the wave equation collapses, but it isn't to say that our conscious awareness of light changes what it does. That would be, I, in my opinion, a terrible interpretation of what we find in quantum mechanics at a very basic level. It is It is more like if you have a pond and you want to study the pond, we've all been in a pond, so there's kind of a layer of muck and then there's a layer of kind of dirty water with bugs in it and such. Now, if I want to study that, I'll take a sample, I'll scoop it out, and when I scoop it out, the scooper stirs up the mud and, and the mud becomes a solution of like mud and water. So now I've changed the state of the pond and when I try to study it, now I'm not studying the same thing. This is similar to the collapse of the wave equation. When we look at a photon uh, or, or light, when we look at light, we're using light to look at it because you can't, looking is an act of seeing light or detecting light or detecting electricity. So in order to detect, you have to strike it in some way or interact with it in some way with itself. So you can come up and interview me and ask me a question that will affect what I'm thinking, that you're there asking me a question. It's as simple as that. It doesn't mean that when I study the pond, my telekinetic powers have changed the pond into something else entirely. It is the crude fact that my scooping <laughs> mushed it all up. I think that you should start from there rather than starting from the idea that if I think angry thoughts at a glass of water, the water will then become a potion that makes you angry. Or that if you look at that water then under a microscope, the water will turn red and be angry. This was in that what the bleep do we know they were trying to make this point by showing you microscopic images which had been color treated to appear emotional. That is um, magenta level um, magical belief. But reality uh when we're talking quantum mechanics we really need to be at least at orange we, we really need to be at least comprehending causation is a real thing and it may have non-local effects it may be counterintuitive how causation really works but we do not have any evidence that there that causation is is in any way disrupted or negated by what's happening at the very smallest scale that we can perceive. It is only the case that we get to a realm where we're no longer capable of perceiving with the means of perception that we currently have. So there's a natural limit there, just on our own ability, not on reality itself. I don't mean to lecture you on physics, um, but I am often lectured by people trying to convince me that we consciously control reality. I would love to consciously control reality. I get my ass kicked every time I try to do that. So I sort of have an ax to grind in saying that I think there's a lot of misinterpretation going on that's inhibiting our capacity to actually comprehend the very counterintuitive and confusing conclusions which are reached more or less mathematically and through very um, confusing experimental procedures. Um, even in the case of the famous 
double slit experiment. I've had so many people try and interpret that to me, but when I ask them questions about how it really works, how does it, re how do you really detect what is really going on in that experiment? It's like no one can actually describe that, the most important part, the methodology, <laughs> but everyone knows the conclusions that are reached, the various um, interpretations. That's all. <laughs>